What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video here on the channel and in this video I wanted to feature my car a little bit, the C55 AMG for those that don't know. Um, now one big question that I get on a pretty consistent basis, um, which is fine because I love answering your questions, that's a lot of the reason why I do these videos, but a big question I get regarding the car is how reliable is it? Which is a valid question since it is a German car, it is 11 years old now, it's a 2006, so you know you're getting aging parts. Obviously, German cars are more expensive to maintain, and sometimes they've been known for their shoddy reliability. <coughs> BMW, what? Um, so. Uh, I thought I'd cover that in today's video, just to kind of give some people uh, buying advice, or if you already have one, what to expect, um, because there is a limited crowd for these cars, and um, I'm, I'm more than happy to be the guy on YouTube answering all the questions or to the extent of my knowledge. So um, there's probably out there people out there that know the car a lot more inside and out than I do, but as far as on YouTube, I'm pretty much one of the very few people that put videos out. I think there's a few others um, out there, but um, it's cool because it's a small community and it's cool to interact with all the people that um, have that own the cars. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the content of the C55 reliability. Now my plan in this video are to go over some of the um, experiences that I've had with the car. Um, and I've had the car since September of 2012, so almost five years. So it's, I've had this car for quite a long time. I'm one of those people that likes to hold on to cars for a very, very long time. I don't like to just, um, you know, have a car for two years and then get a new one, have a car for two years and get a new one. Uh, I like to hold on to cars, work on them. Um, you know, if they break, fix it, and really drive the wheels off the car, pretty much. So I want to kind of share some of my advice, some of the things that I've had to do to the car, and also go over some problem, uh, potential areas to look out for when um, doing kind of like a pre-purchase inspection and things like that, because there are some areas on the car where, um, it could get pricey if it's not functioning properly. So my goal is to cover those things, answer some of the basic reliability questions and maybe some of the more in-depth ones. And of course, if I forget to cover something or if you have something in particular that I didn't cover, comment below and I'm happy to answer it for you. I'm all about feedback to people on YouTube. Okay, so I would I thought I would start with the, um, the area of the car that would cost you the most money if something was wrong with it when you were buying it or once you found out after you bought it, um, which is the powertrain, which includes the engine, the transmission, and uh, if you want to include it, some people, I don't know, uh, include the diff as well. Um, but the engine and transmission are the two biggies, and those will definitely cost you the most money if something is seriously wrong with them or they need a lot of maintenance. Um, now the beauty, the beautiful thing is, is because this thing is, this part of the car is what will cost you the most money, this is one of the most reliable parts of the car, um, to be honest. And the, I don't know what it was, but the 55 series AMGs are very, very reliable. The way they built the M113 block and the M113K, which is the compressor, which is the cars that have the supercharger, the way they built these blocks and the design of it is very, very rock solid. And the five-speed transmission that's made it up to these guys is very solid as well. Now, I've, um, I have about 109,400 miles on the original engine and original transmission. And I bought the car with 86,000 miles. Now, I haven't had any problems with, any serious problems with the engine. I'll, I'll get into the, my experiences in a little while. And I know people on the forums and the AMG group that I'm part of that have 200,000 miles plus on these engines and they still run amazing. Now, I'm going to go over to some, I'm going to talk about some of the things that you might want to look for and, you know, hear, uh, hear for when you're looking for one of these cars. Um, obviously, the biggest thing and probably one of the most apparent things that you should look out for is engine knock. Now, um, for those that don't know what that sounds like, just go search some YouTube videos, but it's like a knocking sound in the engine, which is not a good sound. That means there could be a several different things um, wrong with the car. Uh, and you wanna avoid that at all costs. And so listen for the knock, listen for any odd sounds. I mean, 
What you really should do when you're buying any car, I mean, I know cars pretty well inside and out, and I know what to look for when buying one, but regardless, I always take it to a, a well-known mechanic that I, not the buyer's mechanic, but a mechanic that I'm friends with, um, that'll give me a good, honest opinion on the car to do a pre-purchase inspection because one, I don't have a lift, so there could be things underneath the car, oil leaks that um, you don't see, or suspension things you don't see uh, that you you need a lift for. So that's why it's always critical to do a pre-purchase inspection, regardless of how knowledgeable you are, simply because you might not be able to see it because it's not lifted up in the air or things like that. So. Engine knock, any irregular sounds, um, you know, try and stay away from that. And obviously if there's oil leaks, you know, bring a flashlight with you when you're looking for the car um, and look around the engine block, see if there's any, you know, wet spots or really dirty spots that could indicate an oil leak because oil is a good magnet for dirt. Um, and then obviously look underneath the car to see if it's dripping any oil um, in the place that's been parked or wherever at the dealership and the private party seller's parking spot, whatever it may be. Um, so two things that I've covered, or really kind of two and a half, three things that I've covered so far are engine knock slash irregular sounds. Um, what I recommend is, you know, have the car running, listen to it inside and out, um, and have someone inside the car slowly build up the revs um, not too high obviously, um, but just slowly build them up because sometimes you might not hear certain sounds in, um, at, at idle. It might be at you know, a little bit higher RPM. So that's one thing I definitely recommend um, to do is you know have either the person you're buying from or some a friend come with you and, and do that so you can hear for any irregular sounds. But like I said before, so that's just things to look out for. Um, I have not had any issues, um, knock on some wood, I have not had any issues with the transmission or engine so far. Um, the only thing that I've had to replace was I think two, two and a half years ago, I got a check engine light um, and when I read the code, it was a fuel pump sensor or something like that, I think if I remember correctly. Um, so that was a little bit pricey. I, I took it to the dealership, which I shouldn't have done. Um, I, don't, I didn't know of the mechanic that I know of now that I take the car to. Um, so that was like $400, but that was mainly because I took it to the dealership and they ripped me off because the part is pretty cheap and I'm pretty sure the, the labor to uh, replace it is pretty cheap. Um, so as far as reliability and engine goes, the only thing um, outside of routine maintenance that I've had to do is that fuel pump sensor. So that'll answer some of your questions. Um, before I go on to other parts of the car, the other thing in this section here is the transmission. Now. Um, it's a five-speed semi-automatic transmission. It's not, I mean, you know, some people say semi-automatic, semi-automated semi manual. There we go. Um, it's really an automatic transmission where you, you know, the car's got the paddles and you can change gears, but it's not a true manual. Um, and one thing that you want to look out for with the transmission is, um, does it shift smoothly? That's just the biggest thing. Um, does it shift smoothly? So run it through the gears, put it in reverse. Does the car jerk forward or you know jerk back when you put it in different gears? Um, and what else? Uh, you know, just when you're driving it, give it some gas and see what, how well it uh, shifts when you're on the throttle. That's a big thing. Is you know when you're on the throttle and really giving it the beans. You know, see how well it shifts. If it's really hard shifting when you're doing that. Um, that might be a, something to worry about or to look into. It's not like a super smooth transmission though, so don't be alarmed if it seems jerkier than like a Porsche 911 PDK or the transmission in a 458 Italia. Like it's not a dual clutch, top of the line transmission. So it's gonna be a little rough, um, but it shouldn't be super jerky. Now as far as maintenance goes, um, things that'll cost you are, you know, look out for oil leaks too. Um, so sometimes the gaskets, can, the head gaskets will, will go bad. Um, I had to do the head gaskets one time on this car, but this is not reliability. This is just routine maintenance stuff. The head gaskets aren't really a problem. Um, I had to do the spark plugs. The spark plugs, I mean, you know, that's for people that can work on cars, that's an easy fix. I mean, you gotta take off some of the um, oil packs 
You gotta take up the coil pack and some of the, the intake stuff, but it's a super easy job. So overall, in sum, the powertrain on this car is a beauty. That is one of the A++++ things that this car is known for. C55s and the other 55 series AMGs are well known for their reliable um, blocks. Now, you know, the other newer uh, AMGs, like the 63 series, they had problems with a head bolt issue, which is not a big deal, but you know, it, it was kind of like a recall. It was a recall. Um, and the new um, bi-turbo engines in the new C63 W205 chassis really hasn't been out long enough to, to detect any major issues with the car. Now, as, as scary as it is, if something like this does, you know, a powertrain component go out, um, it's very expensive, but the beauty is, this is one of the most reliable things on the car. So, uh, it, it's been a true blessing to me. I've really driven this car hard. Um, I mean, I don't beat on it like on a daily basis, but you know, as some of my previous videos has, have shown, I take it through the canyons. I'm not afraid to rip it into, you know, high RPMs and downshift hard and accelerate hard. This thing has held up very well over the years. And like I said, I've had this thing for almost five years. It's like four and a half years pretty much. Um, so I give the transmission and the engine an A++ in this C55. Okay, so the next part of the car that I wanna go over that has to do with reliability and possible buying advice is the suspension. Um, now, the suspension on this car is pretty simple and straightforward, and that's content for another video of why I love this car over other AMGs of the same era because of how simple it is. But to keep things straightforward, another thing you wanna look out for are um, suspension components. Now, this is just a standard suspension, double wishbone with your standard, standard shock and spring setup in both the front and rear. Got anti sway bars, of course. Um, and uh, it's pretty simple. So the big thing I just look out for, and this is another reason why you should have, uh, take it, to uh, someone to get an inspection is to put up on a lift and inspect the ball joints and just the structural strength of some of the pieces on the car. Now, one thing that I had to deal with in terms of reliability was one of the, um, I, I'm pretty sure it was just a tie rod. No, it wasn't a tie rod. I can't remember which part it was on the suspension, but a piece was broken. And it wasn't a lot, uh, very expensive to replace, but it was broken, um, so I had to get that um, replaced. So that's just another area to look out for. Check your shocks, um, the, in the ball joints, the rubber pieces are the big things that'll wear out over time, especially with suspension because the rubber parts are the parts that are gonna be absorbing a, a lot of the brunt of the vibration and the shock. So check the suspension. As far as reliability goes, I've had um, hardly anything to deal with in regards to replacing things um, with the suspension. So I give the suspension an A plus as well. And I'm trying not to be biased. I'm really just giving an honest opinion based on what I've had to replace on the car. Now, the next part um, is probably the biggest part to worry about. Um, and look out for it's not necessarily the most expensive I mean it can be if things add up but Mercedes and German cars are really known for this are electronic gremlins now if uh, the electronics I've had friends um, okay so just a little side note here you guys all know Matt Burns or for those that don't know he is a good friend of mine um, that has helped me a lot on building my go-kart now he had a 2003 BMW 535i or some 5 series um, and it was a nightmare the first one he had was good but the second one was an electronical nightmare he would honk the horn and the dome light would turn on the radio would turn on at random times so German cars um, even though that was a BMW German cars do have some electronical gremlins and even the Mercedes are very sensitive um, to electronic stuff as well so as far as electronics go Make sure that the um, the sunroof works properly. All the controls inside work properly for the sunroof because that is a big component that could cost a lot of money. Um, I'm pretty sure you can't buy that part new anymore. You need to, you'd have to find a, I mean maybe you can, but most people would probably find a used part um, for that and I'm sure it's a lot of work to replace it because you got to go from the headliner and I'm sure it's just a big mess. So make sure the, um, uh, 
sunroof works properly, you know, do all the pop-up controls, slide it all the way back, slide it forward, um, you know, do everything you can there. And as far as inside goes, depending on what, um, what you get, what options you get when you purchase the car. Um, mine has the nav system, so not all of them do. That was an option for these cars. Um, but just make sure everything works electronically, all the buttons work. Um, make sure that the paddle shift buttons work, that they change gears. Um, and then another big thing, I'll go to the other side of the car. Another big thing is just make sure that there are no, um, when you turn the car on, that there are no um, dash warnings. So Mercedes have been known um, for their dash warning indicators saying like, oh, this light bulb's out, this light bulb's out. Um, so that is an, uh, th something to look out for when buying it. Um, just really when you do the, when, you in, when you're inspecting the car, just make sure all the buttons work. Do the windows, um, do the power seats, that's a big thing. Check all the power seat functions on both sides. Um, windows all around. Just literally press all the buttons, make sure the seat warmers work. Um, okay, so one thing that I have had issues with in this car is the rear sunshade. Now there's a sunshade that pops up behind the rear headrests and blocks the sun from the back. Sometimes I've had it get stuck and um, it's not a huge deal. To me, the sunshade on the car isn't a something I really use, um, so I just choose not to use it and then it won't get stuck. Uh, it gets stuck in the up position sometimes. So that is one thing to look out for, or if you just don't wanna mess with it, don't press that button. But just make sure all the electronic bits work, all the you know seat functions, sunroof, um, all the lights work. Um, and here's one thing that I will talk about. Uh, so as far as electronical gremlins, the sunshade has been a, a problem in the past, and also I don't have my key with me, but I don't have my key with me, but one thing when I bought the car is I've had issues with the rear tail lights. Um, so apparently I took it to the dealer. So when I turn the headlights on, it tells me tail lights out, substitute bulbs on, which basically says, Okay, so your normal set of tail lights are not working right, so there's a secondary set of tail lights that come on instead. Um, and because of that, I get a notification on the dashboard every time I turn on the car, or turn on the headlights. Um, and I think it has something to do with the wiring harness, and the guy at the dealership said it was, um, there's a computer that controls the tail lights. I don't know if he was being honest with me or if he was just trying to rip me off, um, but I feel like it has something to do with the wiring harness and the plugs on the uh, the tail lights. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this up on the tripod. So like, so yeah, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if the guy was being honest with me or not, but the tail lights are a thing that comes up every time. I haven't fixed it, it's just, I haven't really looked into it. So I have a feeling it's a wiring harness thing because on the clips that plug into the back um, headlight fixture thing, or sorry, tail light fixture thing, there's parts broken off, so that might be causing some electrical um, issues and throwing that, um, not causing the regular lights to come on and throwing that issue on the dashboard. So those are really the only things that I've had with the car. So to sum it all for you guys, because I know I've talked a lot in this video and I'm just trying to be as informative as possible, which is why I like talking a lot. Um, what I've, the issues I've had with the car, fuel pump sensor in the engine, not a big deal. Uh, what else have I had? Oh, the uh, sunshade gets stuck. Um, the tail lights, uh, the rear tail lights have that weird error thing, um, and the suspension part was broken. Um, one of the, it wasn't like the, it wasn't the main wishbone part. It was like one of the sub linkages parts that was broken. Um, and my tire guy noticed it actually when I was getting my new wheels and tires a few years ago. Um, so literally, those four things have been the only issues that I've had with the car so far. It has been a true, um, true queen to drive this thing, and she's awesome. And so as far as electronical gremlins go, I'll give this thing a B, um, because it is kind of finicky in some, some areas. So just make sure you check that um, dashboard, turn on the lights, 
um, see if any notifications pop up because those things can get kind of annoying. Like when I swapped out some of the LED things, um, some of the bulbs for LED bulbs, if you don't get the canvas ones, it throws an error on the dash because it thinks the bulb's out. So that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother video, um, honestly, that I'll be doing here in the future. Uh, but yeah, so I just hope this was some good buying advice for you guys. Um, I pointed out some of the areas to look out for. Um, obviously the engine, transmission, electrical bits, suspension bits. And really, that's that's it. I mean, oh, um, air conditioning, sorry. Forgot one other thing, not powertrain, but just kind of the engine area is air conditioning. Um, one thing that not my car, but some people in the AMG group that I'm a part of, they're, um, it? Their thermostat has gone bad. So if you turn it on cold, it still spews out hot air. Uh, if you turn it on hot, uh, I think it still does hot air. So make sure the AC works. Um, make sure the heater works. You know that kind of has to do with the switches on the inside. So I guess that's why I kind of forgot to cover that. But hit all the buttons on the inside. Make sure everything works properly. Take it to a mechanic that has a lift, or take it to someone that has a lift, so you can at least raise it up. Look for any oil leaks, broken bits. Um, parts that were like damaged because they you know hit something on the road you know sometimes there's things you can't see just looking at a car like this and you need to see it from underneath so I highly recommend that or do a pre-purchase inspection if you feel more comfortable with that but honestly the car has been so great to me I drove I drive it so much and I drive it pretty hard I'm not afraid to get on it um, obviously this isn't my daily because um, I drive a lot for school so that'd be a lot of gas money but when I do drive this thing because it's not my daily I get on it a lot more than someone who a daily it probably does and because of that you know it's really kind of put to the test of how well it'll hold up and I do those canyon runs um, and things like that so I have put a lot of wear and tear on the car and it has held up great so far and I'm so happy for it um, so it, that it's turned out this way and my advice to you um, and you know some people might know this already just keep up with the routine maintenance do oil changes regularly when you're supposed to I do mine usually about between five to seven thousand miles um, and some, some people say you got to change it every two to three thousand miles I don't necessarily agree with that because I feel like that's a little I mean obviously it's more precautions um, but it's like a hundred dollars every time you got to do an oil change so that's more money so if you're willing to pay for that awesome that'll just increase your chances for having a longer life with the car but I think in the end it doesn't make all that much of a difference um, but yeah I hope this help to answer some questions for you guys so this is kind of a reliability slash buying advice video um, and what to look out for in this car um, what I'm gonna do in another video is basically tell you why I love this car and in some it's just such a simple car um, I like a lot of uh, I'll save it for the other video to keep this video from being too long so thank you all very much for watching if you have any questions or comments about the car about some experiences with the car modifications um, I can do another modifications video. I did one a while back, but I'll maybe do an update one. Um, modifications for the car, uh, anything. Leave a comment, happy to answer it for you. Um, and if you haven't already, definitely subscribe to the channel because I have a lot more videos planned for the C55. I've got a little booklet now where I write out my video ideas, so it helps me get them on paper and, and film them. So uh, thanks again guys for watching. Subscribe if you like the videos. I'll see you guys in the next one.